Namaste. Welcome to EPG Patshala. This is Dr. V. Premalata, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Performing Arts, Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati. Today, in the subject Indian Culture under the paper Indian Aesthetics and Fine Arts, we are going to look into a module titled Salient Features of Karnataka Music. Karnataka music is the name of the classical art form of South India. In this module, we will be looking into an outline of the different important features of South Indian classical music system. We would also know the basic technical terms that are being used in Karnataka music. What is Karnataka music? See the art music or the classical music form of South India and that which is practiced in the five southern states namely Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka and Kerala. Music of course has the origin from the Vedas and art music form follows a tradition which was laid down by great musicians and composers through the ages and it is kept followed and the tradition is kept intact. In today's module, we will be discussing about some of the important aspects like Nada, Shruti, Swara, Stai, Raga, Tala, Gamaka, the musical forms, music concerts and music education. Well, let us start with Nada. What is Nada? It is the basic musical sound. As you all know, sound is different from noise. Okay, what is that sound? It's not a mere sound. The sounds of birds, sounds of animals, sounds created by many other things. Day to day we look into many kinds of sounds. But it is the musical sound that is Nada. And it is of two kinds. One is Ahata and another is Anahata. One is said to be natural. Anahata is said to be that one which is created by human beings from their body or through the instruments. The Nada is said to be originated from the naval region of man and when there is a desire that we have to sing and that desire initiates the mind, it stimulates the fire that is in the Brahma Granthi from the naval region and it unites with the air to produce sound and this Nada is said to travel from the navel through the heart, throat, head and finally comes out of the mouth as the musical sound. Shruti is an important term which we come across in Karnataka music. What is Shruti? Literally it means that which is heard is Shruti. Just listen to this now. Yeah, we say that this is my Shruti. Generally, Shruti refers to a tonal aspect and also the sound intervals within, between the swaras in an octave. But it also represents the pitch level, as I just demonstrated or showed it to you now, the pitch level on which a singer or an instrumentalist settles their basic shadja. For example, my basic shadja would be G. This is my Shruti. And in case I had to sing at a lower Shruti. So in our system, this keeps changing according to the artist and for the instruments. So, in general, we say that Shruti 
is an important component and it supports the singer or an instrumentalist throughout a performance and for which we have special instruments called the Shruti Vadyas or the drone instruments. The Tambura as we will be having a brief description about it in the module on instruments. This is an electronic version of the Tambura and other things or the Shruti box or the electronic Shruti box, digital Shruti box and digital Tambura. These are all called the Shruti Vadyas. Next, let us look into what is Swara. Swara is a very important term and it is the basic tonal structure with increasing pitch levels. Swaras are seven in number. They are Shadja, Rishabha, Gandhara, Madhyama, Panchama, Dhaivata and Nishada. These Swaras are pronounced as Sa, Ri, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da and Ni while singing. The singing of the Swaras Sa, Ri, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Ni in the ascending order of pitch is called Arohana and the same singing of the Swaras in the descending order of pitch is called Avarohana. Let me just demonstrate to you the singing of Sarigama Padani, Sanidapa Magari in the scale Maya Malava Gaula. You can just listen and observe how the pitch level increases with the Swaras. Sa Sa Re Ga Ma Pa Da Ni Sa Sa Ni Da Pa Ma Ga Re Sa So this is called Arohana and Avarohana. The singing of the seven Swaras in the Arohana and Avarohana forms the basic exercises for the beginners. Now, the seven Swaras, Sa, Ri, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Ni, together form an octave. So, octave is also called as Thai. In music, we have three octaves recognized. The singing of Sa, Ri, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Ni, the same set of Swaras as I started and showed it to you now. That is called as the Madhya Sthai, the middle octave. I will just show it to you. Saregama Padani. It is Madhya. Sa from there starts the next Sthai or the next octave. Saregama. It goes there. Of course, for human voice, it can reach till Panchama or Pa. The instrument, of course, you can play the entire range. And that upper stai is called Tarastai. Sa, where you started. From there, the downward, there is another one stai, which is called as the Mandra stai. Sa, Sa, Ni, Da, Pa, Ma. So, Sa, Ni, Da, Pa. Till Panchama, I am able to reach. So, Panchama. To Sharja that forms the mandra. Of course, the swaras are there beyond Panchama, Madhyama, Gandhar, everything is there. But for the human voice, the half stai here, the half octave in the tarastai, and the middle madhya is a common range. Next, we will look into what is raga. Ragas are the basis on which the melody is constructed in Indian music. They are constituted of melodic patterns formed of a definite set of swaras. There are so many ragas and, and you will find that a many number of compositions exist in one raga. So all the compositions in that raga will have some common characteristics. Just imagine this way. There is a team. And it, the, all the team members will have some definite set of common characters. And that team differs from the other team. And those people in the members of that team, they will be having a, some set of general characteristics. For example, a team or a raga with the name Mohana, you have n number of compositions. 
and all the compositions will follow as some set of common characteristic features and those features determine and identify and give the picture of that raga. So, and um, it can be said that an amalgamation of the common features found in the music compositions available in that raga gives the lakshana or characteristics of that raga. Let's now see some of the important characteristics of some ragas in general. The first component is the swaras present in the traga. As I told you, there are seven swaras, but these seven undergo some changes and there are some different forms of the swaras also depending on the ragas. You will have a some set of swaras with a kind of pitch interval prescribed for each raga. And these swaras, the way they behave also differs from one raga to another raga. So, the behavior of this swara, the, the way the, each swara is uttered or sung for each kind of combination of swaras and the context also determines the raga. And when you sing a phrase, a phrase I mean a set of two or three swaras which gives an outline of the raga, the way how it starts, the way how it ends also determines the characteristics of a raga. And of course there are some stylistic and identical or assigned kind of indicative phrases that are important to determine that this is this raga. And the summary of all this will bring out the melodic features of that raga. I will just show you an example from Kalyani. The swaras of Kalyani are Sare Gama Padani Sa Sa But the way these swaras are sung, Gare. This is the way the Gandhara should be sung. But in this phrase, if it is in a different phrase, you will see the same Gandhara behaving in a different manner. Gadapamagare, Nedare, Neda, Sarega. There the guy is little different. Pama. So you see the same swaras behaving in a different different types depending on the movement or the route that they take. Now we will look into some of the types of ragas. Ragas of various kinds. As I told you there are many number of ragas. From historical point of view, we have there have been many ragas. I'll just speak of the ragas that are being prevalent and that are being used today. In general, ragas can be classified based on the number of swaras available in them. For example, if a raga consists of all the seven swaras, they are called as the Sampurna ragas. The example be Kalyani, Todi, Shankarabarna. There could be some ragas which have only six swaras, means in that raga one, any one swara would not be available. You can give an example of Sri Ranjini where you don't have panchama in it. Here you can see that there is no panchama at all, but this is a raga called as the shadava raga. There are few other ragas called audava ragas which have only five swaras. That means that two swaras can be omitted or they do not figure in that raga. An example can be cited as mohana which is which omits madhyama and nishada. So this omits Madhyama and Nishada. Let's get familiar with some of the popular ragas of Karnataka music. They are Todi, Kalyani, Shankara Bharana, Maya Malavagavala, Hindola, Suddha Saveri and so on. 
Now, we will just look into the Lakshana of just one Raga. I will demonstrate and tell you how the components are fitting in it. Some of the compositions in the Raga Mohana are Varavina Mridupani, Ninnukkori Yunnanura, Dayarani, Rara Rajiva Lochana, Nagalingam. All these compositions are set to the Raga Mohana. But they are structurally different and the quantity of melodic content or the density of the melodic material or its size differs in each of them. The dosage differs in each of them. But still they all belong to Mohana. I will just sing a sample of one small line from each of them just to show that they all belong to the same group but they are of different kinds. Varavina Mridopani Vanaroha Lochanarani This is from Varavina, it's a Geetam. Next we see Ninnukur. Ninnukur this is a different form. It's called a varna. Dayarani, 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 dasharati rama, dayarani. This is a composition, a kirtana in the raga, mohana. Ra, 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 jiva, lo, chana, ra, ma. This is yet another composition. You can see this is also a kriti, but it is relatively in a lower speed than the earlier one. There is another one composition which is an intermediate to these two. Nagalingam namami satatam namarupa prapanchatita lingam. This is another one song which is see now you observe that all these compositions are in Mohana but the taste or the content and the density as I told you differs. Now let's look into another one concept called Tala. Tala is the basic time measure unit. So it denotes the concept of time measure. Tala is executed through the different actions of hand. Usually, the actions that we execute on our hand, it's, they are called Kriyas. We have two or three different kinds use, in usage in the present day Karnataka music. They are a beat, the finger count and a wave. So, there are many Talas and the common ones are the Adi Tala, Chapu Tala, Rupaka Tala, Jampa Tala and so on. And Tala is mainly made up of different sections like it has a Lagu, a Dhruta and an Anudhruta. What is Lagu? Lagu is that section which is executed or which is known through the action of the hand like a beat followed by finger counts. That forms Lagu. Dhruta means a beat and a wave. This forms a Dhruta. Anadrita is just a beat. So in different talas, we have different kinds of such actions being incorporated and arranged. We will just have a look at one tala which is very commonly used in Karnataka music called as the Adi Tala. Adi Tala is composed of one lagu and two drutas. As I told you, lagu is a beat and a finger count. So, the lagu is of a measure of four matras or a measure of four units which is recognized by a beat, finger count number one, finger count number two, finger count number three. Then it is followed by two dhritas. A dhrita is a beat and then a wave and again a beat and then a wave. I will just demonstrate you the aditala now. One, 
2, 3, 4. This is a lagu. 1, 2. Dhrita number 1. 1, 2. This is Dhrita number 2. Put together we have 8 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the way an Aditala is rendered. We will just see the way how it is rendered in a song. Nagalingam namami satatam So the line Nagalingam namami satatam fits into one cycle of Aditala measuring 8 units. That is the way it is recognized. Next, very important feature of Karnataka music is Gamaka. It gives identity to South Indian art and the classical art music throughout the world. And this Gamaka literally means causing to understand. And a closely related term is Gamana which means moving. In the context of music, probably it refers to the movement or a kind of ornamentation given to a swara. It also refers to a graceful link that is applied on a swara while connecting it with another swara. Sometimes it would also be a stress given to a swara. I will just demonstrate you a little small pieces where you can understand what kind of ornamentation is being given. is a plain rendering of the swaras. Can you find a difference? The way the pa comes from da. It is ga re or the plain swaras. But when it is rendered with gamaka, it becomes ga. You have to oscillate ga. That way it is rendered and that Gamaka is an important characteristic feature of that Raga. One more example I can give is Sa Sa Pa Pa From Sa Sa comes from somewhere not Sa It's not Sa 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 Ga Sa It comes from Ga From Sa it moves to Pa So the glide or a link that is given also refers to Gamaka. Now let us look into the next concept, musical forms. Musical forms or set of compositions having a definite or a similar structure. In Karnataka music, musical forms are differentiated or classified into two main groups. They are the technical forms or those belonging to the Abhyasa Gana. The other are the advanced forms and those belonging to Sabha Gana. Technical forms or the Abhyasa Gana forms are the musical forms which are meant for the beginners and the learners of music. So these musical forms help us to get the basic knowledge and the basic preliminaries and other uh, aspects of Karnataka music one is able to achieve and also one could get the rough knowledge of the raga and the tala and how the entire singing of a composition and such other things are learned by technical forms. Advanced forms are those which are performed on stage and which requires good command over the raga, the tala, the voice and a, a good repertoire and singing these would also incorporate the improvisational aspects. Some of the examples of technical forms are Gita, Jati Swara, Swarajati, Varnam. Some of the examples of advanced forms are Akirtana, Kriti, Ragamalika, Padam, Javali and Tirlana. Now let us have a look at what generally a musical form means. Each of these form will have a definite structural setup. As I told you, the structural setup of a Kriti differs from a Varna and also differs from a Jatiswaram. Jatiswaram or musical forms which are formed only of Swaras. We don't have Jatis or we don't, we don't have a meaningful text for them. And when you come to 
Kriti, it has got a definite structure like an opening session called as the Pallavi, then the next followed by the Anupallavi and a different stanza is called Charanas. There could be one Charana or many Charanas. Sometimes we sing one Charana and just stop with it. Sometimes we render all the Charanas. They might be to the same tune or the different tunes also. There are some musical forms which are called Ragamalika in which each section or each stanza is set to different ragas. I will just show you an example where you can a small bit of a stanza so that you can see that each stanza is set to different different ragas. This is the first stanza composed in Kalyani Raga. There is another stanza which is in Todi Raga. Parama Preeti Todi Gano Palim Jala Mela Parita Pamulelai Pudu Pariharu Jopati Tapavani this is in Todi. There is another stanza which is in Bhairavi. Madhu kaita baba anjani amba marala gamana Bhairavi Madhura puravasini amba maheshwari meenakshi sa Likewise, in this particular Ragamalika, there are eight ragas in the eight stanzas. Another one musical form is called Tillana, which is basically a form used in dance, Bharatanatyam. This is also this is also being sung in musical concerts, and this form is exclusively mainly made up of jatis or the shulkatas. Only one or two lines of the charnam is composed of meaningful text. I will just sing a small glance of this. So this is called Tillana. So they are all different different musical forms having different structures and different characteristic features. Padam is another important musical form which is also again a basic and a very important form in the Bharatanatyam concerts and they have rich musical melodic material it's mostly found in a lower and a lesser tempo so that it gives room for extensive Abhinaya and other emotions to be expressed by the dancer. Musical forms can also be classified into two more types. One is the Kalpita Sangeeta, another is the Manodharma Sangeeta. Kalpita refers to one which has been already composed by great composers, preset. It has to be learned from the teacher and to be kept intact. Manodharma Sangeeta is that which is created extempore on the stage by the artist. Of course, the technicalities and other things have to be rehearsed in earlier itself. And the examples for Kalpita are Gita, Varna, Kirtana, Padam, Javali and so on. In Manodharma, we have five main aspects. They are the Raga Alapana, Tanam, Pallavi, Nairaval and Swarakalpana. I will just show you the few aspects of Manodharma Sangeeta. The Raga Alapana. This is actually giving a picture or essaying the melodic aspects of that Raga. Suppose we take Kalyani. Ah. 
Herein we see that we use the term letters, syllables like ta, da, ri, na, a, so on to just express, give an outline picture of the raga. Next, if you take tanam, it is again giving a picture of the raga but in a different kind of expression. Tanam 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 This is called tanam where the singing is incorporated with the uttering of the syllables like ta nam anam tanam tanam ta but in a little higher speed and it is regulated with kind of a rhythmic structure. Pallavi is singing of a melodic line of one or two avartanas and then improvising the music becomes the naraval. Singing of the swaras, weaving and giving a permutation and combination of different kinds of swaras but within the scope of the traga forms the kalpana swara. The next aspect of Manodharma Sangeeta being the kalpana swara where swaras are sung in permutation and combination of different varieties within the scope of the raga and tala and singing the swaras and ending up with the main line of pallavi this forms the final aspect of the ragam tanam pallavi structure of the manodharma sangeeta we will be taking up the next topic the text or the lyrics of the compositions music compositions in karnataka music are set in samskrita or tamil or telugu or kannada and sometimes in Malayalam also and the theme of the compositions are mainly devotional and sometimes erotic as I said before meaningful text in the composition is called as Sahitya and in some cases we do not have this kind of a meaningful text and we have meaningless text or it can rather be said as the special syllables like the jatis and the swaras also incorporated as part of the text as in the case of tillana and jatiswaram. Next we will take a look at music concerts. Having dealt with all these features of Karnataka music, what is the aim? It has to be performed and presented as an entertainment form, as an art music form in front of an audience. So presenting a concert it's a main aim of music, learning music. So this, the first debut performance is called as the Arangetram or the Ranga Pravesham. The same common term, this is the same term also used in Bharatanatyam and in classical music. And nowadays music performances are being organized by sabhas, institutions and other non-profit organizations. It is also held on stages, auditoriums or in the temple premises as part of the temple festivals or utsavas. Generally a concert is called as a kacheri. We will have a look at different kinds of concerts. It could be a vocal concert as you see in this picture rendered by the Hyderabad brothers accompanied by a vocal a violinist, a mridangist and a tambur artist. This is a veena concert. And you can see that there are a main concert, the concert being presented by the main artist seated in the center. He will be accompanied on maybe violin or mridangam or ghatam as the case may be. And here it is a violin concert and she has another an artist on violin as her support. This is a flute concert where he is accompanied by a violinist and the mridangist. This is a special kind of concerts nowadays gaining popularity called as the Jugalbandi concert. You can see that two artists play or sing music of two different systems. For instance, one would be playing the music on the southern system and one would be playing the music on the northern system. In this picture, 
you see the flute on the southern system and sitar on the northern hindustani music system this is another picture of a fusion concert where you can see a mixture of different systems of music finally we will also have a look at what is music education how it was earlier and how it is today because karnataka music has to be learned properly from a guru and the tradition has to be kept intact and from earlier times we have seen that it was learned under gurukula vasa what is gurukula vasa a student used to go and stay in the house of his guru or the teacher for several years and he would listen to his singing he would accompany him to the concerts and wherever places he go and imbibe the style and the way of singing and the entire music qualities from his teacher changes gradually happen and in recent times we see that a student goes to the teacher's house learns and come back he does he need not stay with the teacher and very recent times music has got into the curriculum that is there are so many institutions that impart music even at the school level primary school level higher school level and also at the college university so we have music as a main subject at the school level the classical music as being the main subject even at the ug and pg level of course now research in music is also getting popular and lot of advancement is taking place a very sur surprising thing is online classes through skype have also become popular here you can see in this picture where a student goes to his house and he learns violin there is another picture where a group of students learn from a teacher this is at home it's a private tuition you can see another photograph where music is taught in an institution there is a veena class going on another is a slide where you can see a music vocal class going on there is an institution which also gives education on learning nagaswaram in an class which you can see in the next picture many students learn nagaswaram from their guru from the classroom this is a unique picture where housewives and ladies they just sit at home they wanted to learn keeping beyond their age and other criteria they are interested in learning music and they learn karnataka music through online now before summing up we will just have a look at what are the main and the very simple and some general characteristic features of carnatic music the compositions are common to both vocal music and instrumental music unlike the north indian system where they have different forms the popular instruments used in karnataka system being the veena violin tambura of which a detailed account will be given in a different separate module the basic exercises to start with in karnataka music we learn in maya malavagavula raga several anecdotes are connected to music and it has said that it had lot of curative values recently music therapy is gaining popularity and being a prime art form classical music keeps up the tradition and cultural values of our country it is said that when practiced with devotion dedication and accuracy the practice of the art the singing the again and again and again singing and performing the art for the art brings or helps us in attaining salvation and liberation and gives us mukti this is the greatness of our music which adds glory to our indian culture thank you